All right, in three, two, one. Welcome once again, YouTube fans and friends. I am your humble host, Bank 60s, on this wonderful journey through Grand Tacticians, The Civil War, 1861 to 1865. We've been playing in an alternate history universe thus far. The Union may be not quite so ready for the Confederate onslaught in our alternate history universe. Many brave Union men have already fallen in the struggle. Here it is. It's time. If you like this content, please click that thumbs up button. If you want to subscribe to my channel, I'd love if you did that. I've got a lot of stuff for you to look through and watch. And then if you want to know when I drop new stuff, you hit that bell notification. All right. To the President, His Excellency. The current rating of our nation is A-. minus. Okay, that's good. Our debt remained unchanged. That's good. That's going to change. Currently, our li liabilities amount to $89 million. The current economy cycle is expansion still. The wealth of our population is below average and increasing compared to the previous month. Our tax revenues increased by $38 million during the last month. Last month, zero companies were founded. Total export volume last month, $20 million. $12 million of imports. We're still in a positive trade deficit average corporate production last three months was 3.1 billion uh very good our economy lacks niter iron livestock our stocks are full of wood very good yeah come on fellas we'll play defense We are very evenly matched here. Boy, oh boy, this could be a good one. Oh, baby. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, this is a unique looking map. I don't have any idea. about this map so what is this bishop heights bishop heights Once again, uh, I was pretty exhaustive in my approach to setting up this defense, and I've pretty much got it. On the left, we have Kimes Division over here, with Crittenton on the far left behind the slope, ready to counterattack at anything that might try to come get this artillery right here. I kind of say the same for these two cavalry units that are detached. They're dual purpose. They're to guard this ford and then also to counterattack if anything comes after that artillery. And then we have the rest of Kimes' division in this peach orchard, the bishop's peach orchard. Moving to the right, we have General Edward D. Baker's division. Basically positioned here in Bishop's Woods, we're calling it, to protect whatever, you know, protect against whatever comes across this ford here, which I'm sure the Rebs will use to attack my position. Then we have Mansfield's division here, which I've moved one brigade in a forward position against a stone wall, by the way. You'll notice the green fence icons. These, these are all units against stone walls. And then last but not least, this stone wall right here is a fallback position for just about everybody on this side of the line. 
if the Rebs manage to make it through those woods. We fall back to this stone wall and give them hell as they come through that field. Mansfield's the reserve. Then over here with Rosso's cavalry, he's basically just going to look out on the right. Over here, we'll call this the Nun Farm. And if anybody decides to come this way, they'll be the lookouts. And we'll react as we need to. Uh, in the worst case, and Mansfield has to react maybe to come over here and take up a position perhaps on these heights here, guarding in these woods to guard our right. Then our cavalry becomes the reserve because that would mean that they've not spread. They wouldn't spread themselves out so thin that they would come against this ford, these fords, and this ford. I want to believe that they're going to choose... And they may choose this one and this one. So we'll see. One thing that's worth noting right up front is that uh, it is already past 7 o'clock at night. And I suspect... Uh, a little too late for us to be fighting uh, a pitched battle tonight. Ah, first glimpse. Here we go. Right here. And a lot of the time, that's cavalry up front. Boy, it sure looks like they're coming for this crossing right here. All right, the rest looks like... Boy, it's really hard to tell. But there's movement this way. Okay. End of day. Attempt retreating. No, not a chance. We'll advance to 0700... Interesting that it advances a little further. It, it it seems to change a lot. Interesting. Okay. We can make some new deployments if we wish. I'm certainly tempted, before we get this thing going, to uh, reposition some of my skirmishers up front here. Maybe put these guys in the house. I wonder what that'll do. Maybe it'll slow them down here. I mean, artillery could become a problem there, but we'll see what happens. All completely worthless now. Actually, let's put them here in the woods. Boy, now if they if they work their way through here and around, I need to get Rosso back over this way. And they're still up here. <clears throat> Not quite sure what they're up to over there. We've got a uh, low cohesion unit coming down the road. I think I see some more. Yeah, they got quite a movement over here, I'd say. Okay, I think... <clears throat> they may try to come hard against my left. We'll be ready for them. I mean, if they want to come this way, I'm half willing to just go ahead and 
try to stop them with the cavalry as best I can at the river. And otherwise, just let them come. Put the artillery up here. This infantry moves down. Alright, so they're going to be coming against my left. And they will very likely be unsuccessful. They're already low cohesion over here. Gosh, I got artillery here that I can just chop up. I think that cavalry is going to be in good, good position here. I think we'll have a chance to do a little damage with the cavalry all by itself out of here. They keep moving over here on the left. They're not going to give it up easy, I guess. artillery over this way. Not half tempted. All the way tempted. Some six pounders. Let's use this high ground right here. Sixteen six pounders coming at you. Here they continue to come up across the ford. Barnard. Time to earn your stripes. Man, it is bloody coming out of that water right there. We kind of need to hold the support. Here we go. Charge. There's no way they've got enough. There's no way they've got enough juice. They do. Wow. And off I go. All right, low cohesion, whatever. We at least want to try to make it so that our artillery can get over here and start laying down some hurt. All right, very nice, very nice. He continues trying to come in these woods after me. And I managed to uh, do a little, little game cheat. Since the Confederates are able to cheat to get across the river, I deserve it. They uh, are going to get a little bit of a cheat here where I can get my guys into quote-unquote defensive positions in the woods by literally just changing their facing. It's a bit of a glitch. It's a bit of a cheat. But... There you have it. Here comes the rest of Mansfield's division. This unit will be moving shortly. All hopes are that we might be able to funnel these guys toward our strength right here. And then one thing we definitely want to do is get our 10 pounders set up. Boop. So they can fire over at these dudes. We've got the other cavalry brigade coming across. Infantry behind, the rest of the army behind. Everybody's coming. Gunfires get deadlier and deadlier. These rebs, man. What? A, oh, I think they're trying to charge. But it's not working out. This tree is in their way. <laughs> uh, I feel like we should maybe mount up. Just in case these guys are coming for us. Our melee is excellent. We'll be able to keep shooting at them. 
And uh, <laughs> we're still in defensive terrain in cover, which is funny because that's kind of hard to accomplish when you're on horse. Fine. Fine. No charging. All right. Now our guns will open up on the next folks in line. I'll tell you what, the Rebs are... This is this is not looking good for them right now. I think we're going to keep it hot. They're kind of botching it. And, and, you know, they were not set up for success here. Let's not sugarcoat that. But they are not... Certainly not looking good right now. They look confused. They look stymied. And uh, a lot of them look dead at this point. Kind of a foregone conclusion. They may come attacking up the hill at me. And they may be stubborn about it, but boy, oh boy, they're going to get a bunch of them killed. I really don't understand it, but okay. You know what we're going to do? Since we've got Rosso back... Looks like we do have some movement towards our men here. Got a uh, Confederate brigade under Pendleton with 2,600 men on the move over this way. And here we go. I think we're going to go for this. And, of course, you're noticing my heavier use of cavalry out here in the open field. And this is uh, an approach that I really kind of wanted to try out ahead of um, more action like this, I think. Utilizing cavalry as kind of mounted infantry. charge. Pendleton's going to be stymied now. We'll give these guys a little bit of a break. Make him fall back. down, holding these guys in place with Rosso here. Get a fresh unit of skirmishers that we can bring down here on the fence. Let's go up and hit them. There we go. We won't charge them, we'll just shoot at them. Go. We're back in business. And up. Oh, hit him on the flank. Alright. They're freaking out. Time to mount up.
Send him out up. Charge. Yeah, all right. Send him off. Send him off. Hopefully we can get him to surrender right here. That'd be kind of cool. Scott watching back here, the Army of North Virginia. Oh, Winfield Scott, Winnie boy. The old man, the old bastard. Uh, looks to be engineering another Union victory right here, right now. And a very convincing one at that. It is as we expected, but... Also, not. I thought that the Rebs would be smarter than to just choose one of the uh, river crossing options. Gosh, if they can get across the river at all, whatever's left of them just won't have the strength to make any kind of a difference, man. None whatsoever. And it's been all cav. Infantry hadn't done squat. All cav and artillery, that is. This may go to show that uh, we're learning. We're learning that cavalry is, is very valuable as it always has been on the flanks, of course, right? But that if you combine it with artillery like in the Napoleonic era, even still, as long as it has weapons when it dismounts that will match infantry weapons or beat them. A cavalry army in the open could ultimately be a key to victory for us in the future. I don't know. Here we go. All right. Wow, all right. Enemies retreating. Whoa, yeah. That is what we're talking about, folks. Roughly six times more enemy killed. Mm -mm. So many more wounded, so many more missing. His Excellency the President, the Battle of Chesapeake and Ohio Canal, or the Battle of Bishop Heights, is ended with the Army of the Northwest retreating in panic. My command has earned us a total victory, indeed with the enemy army running for their lives. The enemy has reportedly suffered. We've already got all that info. Victory! Army of the Northwest fleeing in panic. General Jackson loses face. Hey, all right. I think that would be the famous Thomas Jackson. And the siege outside Washington continues. Our chances of victory have increased. We did let him get away. May be able to retake Winchester. Hampton, building a supply depot. Oh, my. Interesting. We better pursue them. We need to get to Winchester. I think they're headed south. I think they're headed back to Winchester. I want to pursue him, and I think I may want to go ahead and attack him. I 
wonder what these guys are up to. Interesting. Which is a bit of a bummer. Not real bad. Oh, rainy. Nasty. Nasty rainy. Which does not bode well for our advance on Winchester. We're really in the thick of it over here. Uh, these guys continue seeing units route and taking casualties because I am raiding right now with my cavalry. It would appear the Rebs know how important these salt mines are, these coal mines, these salt facilities here. They have an army devoted to protecting the area. The Army of Northern Virginia, as we saw just a bit ago, 2,200 men, limited info from August the 31st, 11 days ago. All right, come on, Winnie boy. Get you guys up. Let's go. Oh. We can assign a perk. This is attractive, this partisan brigades. We're in West Virginia area-ish. It makes sense. I think it, from a role-playing aspect, you know, we've uh, seen victory here in Northern Virginia. Um, partisans in this area may have been willing to join up with Winfield Scott. I'm very, very attracted to that from a role-playing aspect, quite frankly. Maybe more attracted than anything else. The one I want is engineering and mechanics just to see what I can build because I'm curious from a gameplay aspect. I'm not going to go with it, though. I'm going to go with partisan brigades is what I'm going to do. Quickly before action. 25 million in bonds. Okay. Current interest rate at 8.22% is good. And off goes Polk. Yeah, we need to retake Harper's Ferry. The army up here basically is going to be consolidating control of the uh, northern portion of the Shenandoah Valley while the army of the uh, Confederate Army of the Northwest uh, probably retreats to its supply depot here. So, successful campaign in Northern Virginia, retaking Winchester. We'll just continue to raid. Ah, the Confederates have gone with King Cotton II. Plantations receiving more government support. Cotton to replace iron and, work sh and warship design. Ooh. So, uh, in order to produce more ships, two, the Rebs may go with this. European cheers, cotton flows, more slave workforce needed. All right, well, you hate to hear that. Oh. They don't have as much iron as they need. It looks like they only produce... 2.2 pieces of it across the entire south. We have two naval squadrons that are really ready to go right now. The Block Island Sound Squadron and the Lower Bay Squadron with 14 ships which we intended to use on an attack on Norfolk. We're going to be moving the Lower Bay Squadron to Baltimore. And here we have a naval counter move on my part. The Union issues letters of mark. Privateering made legal. Corsairs to attack trade ships. Europeans condemn the use of pirates. 
price of imports and exports increasing in the South. And now we enter a bit of a lull in the war. Oh, here we go. Credit rating just went down a bit. We may have a little more action coming up here. And now we've taken Winchester. All right. Very good. Very good. And the Army of North Virginia will advance in an effort to finish off these Rebs. That's what we're going to do. We've reconnected with our supply depot now that we've taken control of Winchester. As you can see by this yellow line here. And yeah, we're on defensive posture for now. But we're changing over again. Polk withdrawing. Yep, his army's still in too bad a shape. We're letting them get away, marching south and west down the valley or up the valley again, as the case may be. But we're just going to have to live with that. While we kind of await the uh, fall. Oh, hey, our credit rating's back up to an A minus. Excellent. Um, I think maybe uh, while we await fall, got the uh, <clears throat> Army of the Potomac on the move. That's 26,000 men. Hampton's not moving yet. Or he built that depot for these armies up here to be better supplied. Interesting. The Army of the Potomac joins the fray in the sieges around Washington. It would appear. Army of North Virginia is going to continue probably moving south. I want to open up an opportunity for them to come and try to cut me off. See if they'll take it and advance on Newmarket, which I already have taken myself. We're going to stay on defensive posture. But again, the point of this is we want to try to give the Rebs a little temptation to maybe try to come over here with a portion of their force around Alexandria and outside Fort Archer. Maybe they'll bite, maybe they won't. In any case, the Army of North Virginia will have advanced a little further down the valley or up the valley again as the case may be. That much closer to Staunton. That much closer to outflanking these Rebs and essentially forcing them to deal with me. And then the other action that I want to undertake is the attack on Norfolk with the lower base squadron and the home squadron. It'll be a combined 31 ships. All right. Funding one policy selected. September 26, Washington. The federal government has agreed on and introduced a number of new laws. These allow increased government funding to cover the costs of the national crisis. The economic foundation, the steps already taken, have made the economic foundation stronger with foreign nations offering loans at improved rates. The new laws give the government the authority to further improve funding with new bills being drafted to allow the printing of new bank notes 
and to increase the tariffs imposed on foreign imports. More controversially, the new laws are preparing the union economy for war. Among the hot debates on the Senate floor, the status of southern property used to support the union war effort has been discussed. This boils down to whether or not to respect the private property of the people who have openly rebelled against the United States. Again, probably more window dressing, but still interesting. Well, I'll tell you, considering the status of the war at present, there aren't a ton of moves I really want to make. Honestly, what seals the deal for this one? Diplomacy won. With a diplomatic focus in policymaking relations with European superpowers, the, the material, that's what I wanted to get to, advantage and the material benefit here outweighs any cost in money that we would devote to diplomatic subsidies because this policy allows the import of Enfield and Lorenz rifles. Which, I mean, those are good rifles. Uh, in the hands of our capable soldiers could do some serious damage. So I think we're going to go with Diplomacy 1. Here we go. Bombarding. So we're just going to continue this bombardment in Norfolk. Army of the Northwest returning to the valley here. I may be interested in attacking. And just bloody them. Maybe take them out. Ah, we lost the Sabine. Home squadrons tore up pretty bad. The USS St. Louis is down, home squadrons withdrawn. This Reb Army moved closer to Charleston and my rear. You know, something I was curious about. All right. Hey. Yeah. Here we go. Our railroad out here in Iowa has been built. Very good. That's big. That links the Union Pacific Railroad directly all the way through Iowa and to the Mississippi River via Davenport and Keokuk. Excellent. From there, they can go down the river, up the Ohio, into Cincinnati, and then from Cincinnati on to wherever they are needed. Beautiful. And really, that's all the railroad we need for those goods to be transported. However, it makes, and that's one of the reasons why I'm <clears throat> adding strength to my Mississippi fleet, 
this vital river link. Oh. Here we go. Army of Tennessee with about 7,500 men, 15 guns moving north into Tennessee, or in Kentucky, rather. Okay. Since the Confederates have entered Kentucky, I do believe it would make sense for McClellan to do the same. We're gonna come down here near Frankfurt. Ooh! Oh, caught me sleeping over here a little bit. Boy, this could be interesting. I'm on defense, so I may be able to use entrenchments. Interesting. All right, folks. This is going to be the next big one, I think. Let's dive in. Okay, I am mystified by what this is going. Oh, what is going on here? Uh, what? What the fuck? Okay. Unbelievable that uh, we have this situation developing right now, but so we do. So we have it. The Rebs are able to find a little, uh, sweet spot there somehow. Maybe we'll isolate that brigade. Tell you what, if you're gonna cheat, I'm gonna try to cheat. <laughs> Game. <coughs> Freaking BS. Freaking BS, man. I'm going to move over here real quick. And there's some things that I want to do with the Army of Northeastern Virginia. Let's recut that. I'm going to move over here real quick because there's some things I want to do with my Army of Northeastern Virginia. My main army. And one of the things I wanted to look through here really quickly was kind of the condition of the men and maybe how I could maybe do some reorganization and um, how experienced the guys are. Uh, I wanted to check in on that. First unit that I, ident I identified is Baker's Brigade. I want to highlight them because they only have one month left on their contracts. They need more men. They're going to lose a lot when the contract period ends. And so I figure it's probably best to go ahead and send them off for furlough and replenishment. I, I figure that while they're gone, they'll be able to keep their ranks maybe right where they are instead of losing so many men when the contract's up. And maybe they can re-sign a bunch while they're at home back in New Jersey. Of course, support in New Jersey is not great, so we'll just have to see Maybe it won't be so impressive. But we've won some battles. Hopefully that helps with national morale. That helps also. So we're going to send them back. And they'll be gone for quite some time. 
41 days. More than a month. The next move that I wanted to make was to replace Colonel Henry S. Burton, who has been wounded in action. His brigade is battle experienced, which, as we read here, means the men know battle and can be depended on to carry out most combat missions. Under heavy stress, they still need the encouragement of a good commander. So uh, Burton's brigade was really steadfast in the face of some really intense pressure during the Battle of Mount Pone. And I certainly uh, recommend that you go back and watch, I believe it's episode four, to relive that battle. But in order to replace the commander who's wounded, we don't have any good options. There's just a major, some captains, no colonels. So we're going to have to cancel. And what we're going to have to do is solve this problem by solving another one, which is these two brigades here that are undermanned. One of them has experience, some experience. The other one doesn't, although they do. They fought in both the Battle of Grigsby's Farm and Mount Pone. Limited combat, I would admit, here in Runyon's division. But we're going to combine Richardson and... Oh, I'm sorry, Brown and Buchanan, I mean. And what's left behind will be a brigade of greenhorns under Harvey Brown with 10 months remaining and a fairly good strength. And then what we will have done is open Buchanan up for brigade command. And now, this brigade, formerly under Burton, will have, will have its new commander, Buchanan, who now transfers under Brigadier General George E. Smith, commander of the entire division. That's another move I wanted to make sure that I made to reorganize the army and perhaps strengthen it just a bit. The lesson learned <clears throat> here with the Army of North Virginia in the last battle that we just fought, there was a bit of a lesson learned. I'm not necessarily willing to make a move on it just yet because the, um, the combined arms approach to a division is still attractive divisions as long as they can operate at this stage of the war anyway where things are a little more wide open um, it, as long as a division can operate as a combined arms force within itself that's kind of preferred um, it can hold and take territory I think a little bit better with it as, you know, as a self-contained unit that way so I'm not ready to break off the cavalry from each division and form a cavalry division with it. But I will tell you that I'm very close to wanting to do a thing like that based on the success of the cavalry units during the Battle of Bishop Heights. However, we won't pull the trigger on that just yet. I will look through the army... Yeah, this is a this is not a awesome army by any means. It's well, it's not well equipped, not all that well equipped anyway. Not a lot going on out here for Joseph Hooker and his men, although they deserve a perk. Again, with role playing in mind, pausing during the overnight hours here. They've done a lot of building of stuff. That's really been about it. So.
I think I'm going to go with engineers and mechanics on them. And they are regaining some strength out there. Reinforcements have flowed into Hooker's army, it looks like. I think he might be able to get away with advancing to a little bit southwest of Lebanon and pushing the front into Missouri a little bit further. I think the Department of the West could likely do the same down to this crossroad. So we'll advance them. And hopefully they don't run out of supplies. But we're making a little bit of progress out in the West, just kind of pushing the line forward. 